His light heavyweight fight I've seen. For this fighter who fought with heart and courage in the ring tonight from Montreal. I don't know if you box numbers, and you can see that Kovalev's volume was far superior to that of Pascal. We expected that. Kovalev was the body puncher in the fight. Landing 54 more punches, throwing 271 more, so that his lower percentage didn't really mean all that much. Pascal got in some tremendous power shots, countering Kovalev's big stuff. But at the end of the day, Kovalev lands more power punches, even though Pascal landed at an impressive 41% rate with the big arcing punches that he was throwing. And Punch Zone will show you where the punches landed on Kovalev. 33 headshots, 35 body shots by Pascal. Obviously, body shots were a part of the game plan for Pascal, and he was landing them effectively. But Kovalev was coming at it. Landed the jab and the right cross and the left hook. All upstairs, 95 punches <coughs> to the head of Pascal. Not many left hooks to the body, but right hands and jabs to the body. 27 total body punches. And now let's go to Max Kellerman in the ring. Sergey, we've been waiting for someone to give you a good fight. That was a really good fight. Tell me about it. Uh, I just uh, thank you so much for compliment. But uh, uh, how I started, I didn't like. But uh, after fourth round, I got uh, control under uh, under uh, Jean, and uh, we saw what what you saw, you know, like. I just uh, got, got uh, him from the good right, right hand, and he lost, he lost mine. Uh, Have you ever been in a fight like that, amateur, pro, in the gym? Have you ever been in a fight like that before? Sure, and it was a harder fight than this one. Because we haven't oh, seen crazy. it as a profession. In amateur career. You looked like you had him out at the end of the fourth round. You dropped him. Um, he barely made it back to his corner. And then he came back and landed some big shots against you. Were you hurt at any point in the fight? Um, yeah, he got me a couple good punches, but I didn't lose uh, control. Uh, I, I took uh, contro uh, my mind in, in control in my, in my mind. And like, uh, did my job, just, uh, it's boxing, it's boxing. Adonis Stevenson came to us ringside just now and said, believe me, I'm going to fight him. What do you think about a fight with Adonis Stevenson? I'm ready for anyone. What about a rematch with Jean Pascal, considering the type of fight he gave you tonight? Uh, I'm ready for any fight. If my promoter said me fight, I need to fight uh, <coughs> Pascal again. Like I'm ready. Congratulations! Really exciting performance. Thank you. I want to hear from Jean Pascal. Here we go. Jean Pascal, you came in with black boa on your trunks, the black Balboa, and you fought that way. Tell me about this fight. Honestly, I think that was a good fight for the fans. That was an action fight. I give my best. I don't. I don't want to take anything away from Kovalev, he's a great champion, but that stoppage, I think that was a bullshit stoppage because I was still in the fight, that was, a tough, that was a tough fight for both of us, and I don't know why the referee just stopped the fight, that's, you, boxing. that's not hockey. You seem to come into this fight prepared for this kind of fight, that you were going to have some rocky moments, so to speak, that you were going to have to come back for, from, you came back from those moments a couple times, why do you think the ref stopped it when he did? Honestly, I really don't know. You should ask him that question. I feel that uh, he was waiting for that moment, but I was in the fight uh, from from day one, from the first round. I gave him, I'm sure that I gave him his toughest fight, but uh, like I said, uh, we should do it again. I should have a rematch. You've never, I, we've never seen you drop before. He dropped you. We've never seen you stop before. Here is the stoppage. You can watch it right here. Yeah, all right. Tell me what you see. But he was coming, he was throwing bombs, but this is the sport of boxing, to get some and give some. But I was still on the fight, I was not uh, say on the canvas, uh, say, say I wasn't say crumbling, nothing, I was there, look. I was watching, you know, say I was, I was watching his punches and the referee just stopped the fight. I feel like the referee was waiting for that moment to just stop the fight. 
What is a feeling for you like after we... It's been a long time since we've seen a light heavyweight scrap like this among elite fighters. What is the feeling to perform that way even in a loss in front of the hometown fans? Listen, I'm a crowd pleaser. With Bell, with no Bell, I always want to give the fans a great fight because I'm a warrior, I'm a true champion, I'm the people's champ, and I want to thank you guys, all of you, thanks for coming, thanks for HBO, thanks for all my fans around the world. I'll be back, don't worry. Thank you, Jean. Jim? Um, you know something? Um, Black Bob Bow was, was, was on his shorts. Um, he came out to a song called, uh, well, a tune called Final Fight. From um from uh, Rocky IV, um, even during a media call that I had the pleasure to be on, he was talking about that um, Sergey Kovalev was like the Russian Ivan Drago. He killed somebody in the ring, and to see the shots he was taking, especially during the um, during the time where Kovalev was about to stop him in the eighth round. I'm talking before it got stopped, and Kovalev slipped. A lot of fans thought it was a knockdown. Kovalev got back up, you know, hit uh, Pascal with two right hands right there in front of the uh, 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 referee's eyes. One of the right hands, it looked like uh, Jean Pascal was going to break his neck because his neck, you know, he gave uh, it. Um, it's not a movie. Um, I feel that Jean Pascal was going to get seriously hurt. Uh, Jean Pascal has been known to have um, endurance stamina issues. And they showed up once again. Now it seems as though he gassed earlier in the fight. I forgot which fight. Uh, which round was that when he got knocked down? Which round was that when he got knocked down? I believe it was early. He got knocked down earlier in the fight uh, to the point where he went out the ropes. Not a knockdown on the canvas, but he went out, you know, like on the ropes. And if there was about 10 more seconds left in that fight, he would have been stopped. You know what you look for um, um, when, when you think a fighter is going to get stopped, for example? Amir Khan, you know when Amir Khan's about to get stopped because Amir Khan's his legs go, he gets in the, the to massive retreat mode, his mouth is wide open, his eyes are real big, and you saw that with Jean Pascal. Each time he got hurt, you saw that he went into another he he went into another dimension. It seems, you know, because you would see all over his face like, oh, he's still on his feet, but he's not here with us right now. Um, there were several times when he got hit. Um, where you just saw his eyes would just open up and he'd just be a little bit lost. Like, for example, uh, the stoppage. Before the stoppage, when the referee was getting Jean Pascal, I mean, um, uh, helping Sergey Kovalev up because Sergey Kovalev was about to stop Jean Pascal before Pascal got stopped, you see Pascal, like, you know, in the corner looking like he stopped or looking like the ref is uh, counting the knockdown, but then you see him on his feet, you know, on his legs. You know, doing this, and then he goes to lean back on the ropes and looks around like all oh, lost. And you know, and, and, and when I'm seeing stuff like that, I'm thinking to myself, "Oh, Sergey Kovalev sees this and is going to go finish him off." Now it's time to give some credit to um to uh, Jean Pascal. Um, does he beat Adonis Stevenson? Adonis Stevenson was there, by the way. Adonis Stevenson walked up to the HBO commentary uh, uh, table, told Bernard Hopkins. That he was going to fight Sergey Kovalev, that he wasn't afraid, of course, because of network issues. You couldn't have HBO give Sir give Adonis Stevenson an interview. Adonis Stevenson couldn't get into the ring because of thank you Al Heyman reasons. Thank you, Al Heyman. Um, but will it happen? He says it's going to happen. He says he's going to make it happen. He's got to get past Saki Obika. I have Saki Obika highlights and Adonis Stevenson highlights. Right here, exclusive from Showtime. Thank you to Showtime. Um, and once you get past uh, Saki Obika, then we'll see. Sergey Kovalev is going to have to defend his WBO title against um, Najib Mohamedi. Um, um, and then he is also the WBC light uh, heavyweight uh, diamond champion. So which basically makes him the uh the what basically the WBC has made him after Saki Obika the mandatory for that WBC title. You saw Sergey Kovalev with that new WBC belt on. So now he's the WBA Super World, WBO, IBF, IBO, and um WBC Diamond Light Heavyweight Mandatory. Um right now, will Sergey Kovalev, since he's the 
It, I mean, honestly, it's looking like a Donna Stevenson may end up on HBO, to be perfectly honest with you. That's what is it's looking like a Donna Stevenson may end up on HBO. I would love this or Saki Obika. I would love to see it, you know, but we will see, you know, will Al Heyman, you know, make make him fight. I mean, make him drop the belt. I don't know. We will see. Uh, Donna Stevenson's next fight is on, I believe it's April the 4th on um, CBS. He's fighting on national television in the United States. So that's going to be a big deal. But I'm T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live of RealCombatMedia.com. What does Jean Pascal, Jean Pascal go from here? Be perfectly honest with you. I mean, in the light heavyweight division, he wants a rematch. Should he get a rematch? Will a rematch be exciting? Will Kathy do? Will a promoter of um, Sergey Kovalev give a rematch? Yes, but will it be right away? No, because there's bigger fish to fry as far as getting those mandatories out of the way. And also, when you look at the WBA and the IBF and the WBC, they've been making that mandatory. So being the undisputed champion is, 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 is a difficult task these days and you have to be a guy who's going to be active like right now active champions are guys like Sergey Kovalev, Guillermo Rigondeaux, um, um, Gennady Golovkin and, I'm and, and when you look at guys who will fight three plus champions that will fight three plus times a year you're going to look at Vladimir Klitschko, um, Sergey Kovalev and uh, Gennady Gennadyevich Golovkin just so happen those guys are fighting on HBO but I already told you what's next for uh, Kovalev. I mean, will there be a rematch? Do I want to see a rematch? Yes, I would want to see a rematch. Um, because we saw we saw so many different things from both fighters that, that can be desired in a rematch. And also, honestly, I wanted this fight to go the distance. But um, Sean Pascal, you know, he just seemed to gas out to me. He seemed as though, you know, with, with, with the shots that he was taking. And Sergey Kovalev right now, to be honest with you. He is not just a power puncher. He's not just a knockout artist. Dude is the total package. He's got the jab. He's got the punch variety. He's got the movement, the lateral movement. He's got the stamina. He's got the chin. He's got the conditioning. He's got the endurance. Right now, from what I'm seeing, as far as light heavyweights are concerned, he is the complete package. As far as fighting a guy like Andre Ward, I do believe that he has a great chance to defeat a guy like Andre Ward. And we're, and we're talking about the best at, at the 168 pound division stepping up to 175 if he ever decides to do so where he'll be able to get some very fruitful fights you know but I am T Street Controversy with RealCombatMedia.com I cover every single major fight live please subscribe